All right, so in this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate somatic dysfunction evaluation for the radial head. We're going to start by observing our patient. So with our patient in a seated position, they could also do the standing. We're going to first inspect for any obvious asymmetry in the forearms and elbows. So go ahead and tuck your elbows to your sides and bring your hands in front of you. We want to start with our patient with their hands in a neutral position, and then we're going to go through supination and pronation. It can be helpful to demonstrate for our patient so they know what to do. Then we're going to ask our patient to supinate and pronate. So we're going to ask them to flip your hands over and then flip your hands over the other way and then flip it over again flip it over again and each time we're going to be observing for any asymmetry that's going to indicate to us that there may be somatic dysfunction on one side versus the other and I'm noticing that on this right side uh, she seems to not pronate as far so we're going to focus our attention onto that right side so now making contact uh, we need to find our radial head so we can start by finding the lateral epicondyle of the humerus uh, we can use our index finger or middle finger and then glide distally until we fall onto the radial head. We can supinate and pronate our patient's forearm to help us find it and we'll feel it rolling within the annular ligament under our finger. And then we can take our thumb, find the brachioradialis, just move just medial to it and you'll feel this little indentation where the muscle ends and you can push through that muscle and behind it and you can find the radial head behind that and you can take your middle finger and thumb and pinch the radial head in between your fingers. So now once you've identified that radial head you're going to use short lever dynamic testing to assess posterior and anterior glide. So using your thumb you can press posteriorly and induce posterior glide in the radial head and you can use your middle finger or your index finger to push anteriorly inducing anterior glide in the radial head and you can go back and forth a few times and what I'm feeling here is a slight freedom of motion and anterior glide and a little bit of a restricted barrier when I push posteriorly. So now if we were going to name our somatic dysfunction based on these findings, we would name it for its freedom of motion. So we said that it had a freedom of motion anterior glide, so we would call the radial head an anterior radial head. Now to further assess the radial head, we can use long lever dynamic testing. And thinking of the radius, uh, it's a long bone moving from the wrist to the elbow and it's firmly affixed at the radial carpal joint and it is more, a little bit more loosely fixed um, at the elbow, at the radial head within the annular ligament, and there's also the interosseous membrane that binds the radius to the ulna. Because of these connections, that allows the proximal and distal radius to have reciprocal motion, almost like a seesaw or teeter-totter type motion. And we can use that to our advantage. So again, contacting the radial head between our fingers, and then we're gonna take our other hand and we're going to grasp the distal radius and when we pronate, because the distal radius is moving anterior and medial, uh, reciprocally, the radial head is moving posterior and lateral. Now, when we supinate, the distal radius is moving posterior and lateral, and the radial head is moving anterior and medial. So now we can use that and pronate and supinate using our thumb to enhance posterior glide, using our middle finger to enhance anterior glide and further confirm our findings. So again, I'm finding a little bit of a restricted barrier when I attempt to pronate the wrist and I feel a freedom of motion when I supinate the wrist, it's a freedom in anterior glide. So again, naming that for its freedom of motion, that somatic dysfunction would be named as an anterior radial head.